three, two, one. You're live. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to the Monday, July 25th, 2016 meeting of the Long Meadow School Committee. I would like to call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded for LCTV, being aired live, and also live streamed through longmeadow.org. The meeting was posted as required by the open meeting law. Okay, so first we don't have any correspondence this week. And do we have any visitor comments at all this morning? Nope. School committee comments. Nope. Oh, yes, thank you. We have Michelle Grodsky also present remotely. Michelle, do you have any uh, school committee comments? I do not, thank you. Okay. Can she go up? Yeah. All right, so we'll start with the superintendent's report. All right, so <laughs> this is, uh, I suppose, my, my first official meeting. I've been to several, uh, but I'm very excited to be here. Started uh, on July 1st, and uh, many people have asked me, how's it going? And my, my first answer is, it, it feels right, it feels good. And um, <laughs> I'm, I couldn't be more excited uh, to join the Long Meadow community, and uh, it, it is, it, it's uh, something I feel proud of and, and humbled at the same time uh, to serve as, as the leader of this uh, learning community. So I, I greatly appreciate the support I've uh, felt from the administrative team, from Sue, from Tom, Diane, from the school committee, uh, town officials, everybody has uh, greeted me warmly and, and it's made for a, a very smooth transition. Uh, in your packet, I have included uh, an entry plan, and it uh, takes you through some of the activities that have kept me busy and will continue to keep me busy in the weeks and months ahead. And I was fortunate to really uh, get started before the end of the academic year uh, through my involvement with the Wolf Swamp uh, Principal Search and the Search for a New Director of Special Education. And so uh, I appreciated those two opportunities, and, and they helped orient me to the district. Uh, the entry plan that I presented to you is, is primarily to uh, orient myself to the district to uh, get to understand the community, to start to establish a foundation for uh, the relationships that I know are, are critical to the success of, of the district. Um, certainly on my travels and as I meet people learning about uh, the academic and social emotional needs of the children in this district is critical uh, and um, I want to understand some of the challenges the district is facing and also understand obviously the assets that we have as a learning community so uh, that primarily is the purpose of, of putting a, an entry plan uh, in writing to you one of the uh, components of this has been to um, review uh, documents that are, are sort of frame the work of the district in terms of uh, policy and practice and so Diane has been very helpful in kind of pulling together uh, a lot of those those documents including contracts strategic plans uh, policy manuals uh, improvement plans etc so there's uh, a pile of reading that I've been engaged in uh, over the last several weeks and haven't gotten through everything, but uh, I will uh, in, the, in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, in the last few weeks, I've spent quite a bit of time meeting with um, key stakeholders, both internal and external. Uh, many uh, town officials uh, have uh, greeted me warmly. I've been to the police station, the fire station. I've met with the select board chair. Uh, I've met with um, the DPW director. I have plans to meet with the uh, recreation director and uh, uh, make my way to HR to meet Erica Gelinas. Uh, I'll sit down with um, some of the people that work directly with us in public safety, the, uh, the school resource officer, the fire and life safety educator uh, who are kind of uh, working with us on a, on a regular basis. Uh, I hope to meet with Paul Pesterzik and uh, uh, the committee uh, Russ had recommended also sitting down with the um, uh, chair of the finance committee, which I'll, I'll sort of add that to the list of, of stakeholders that I'd like to meet. Uh, as the year gets started, my intention is to meet with parent groups, uh, school councils, PTAs. Uh, I'd like to sit down at some point with uh, uh, representatives from the Special Education Alliance, um, uh, the uh, board uh, members from, from LEAF, I think, is another group that I'd like to uh, connect with and if there are other uh, parent groups 
that the committee thinks would be helpful for me to meet with them, I'm more than happy to do that. And then certainly as the year uh, starts up, meeting with school staff in, in many different venues, both formal and informal, uh, I'll try to take advantage of every opportunity, staff meetings, uh, building walkthroughs, meet and greets, professional development activities, et cetera. And then even uh, I, I'm really eager to meet with some student groups as well. So uh, I know the principals will be, will be helpful uh, to me in that. And then the most important part of this uh, entry plan, I think, outlines for you what I hope to establish as a uh, district improvement planning process. Uh, the district has a strategic plan that is set to expire in uh, June of 17. Uh, but I think more pressing right now is the need to develop a, uh, a three-year district improvement plan. And I think if we were to uh, pull that together with uh, a lot of stakeholder involvement, I think it will allow us to line up um, educator evaluation plans and school improvement plans with district goals. And so if we can get those, those three components in alignment, I think it would be helpful to the uh, continued growth of this district. Uh, and I think a three-year district improvement plan would also be a, an important communication tool, hopefully, for this committee as, as it uh, communicates the needs and direction of the district to, uh, to the wider community. And then uh, that district improvement plan, uh, you know, properly put together could be um, a, ultimately could be kind of um, a basis for a longer strategic plan if, if the committee chose to go in that direction. The development of this district improvement plan will, will begin in earnest when we get together uh, for the first time as a full administrative team this week. Um, principals, assistant principals, district administrators, we're gonna gather and one of the, one of the things we'll do is uh, evaluate this district against the set of standards and indicators that the Department of Education has put together around effective district, district practice and so uh, I'm looking forward to kind of having that conversation with the administrative team and just to begin to put together some uh, focal areas for a potential district improvement plan. Final reason that that district improvement plan is important is because it, it also uh, rightfully should be part of my annual plan. So as a basis for uh, the superintendent's evaluation, uh, there are there are three components. There's a uh, student learning goals, my own professional practice goal, and those two things are combined with uh, a district improvement plan. So those three elements ought to be part of uh, the, the evaluation of the superintendent. And so I know that's obviously important to the committee. So as I go through this process, my hope is that, you know, by September, October maybe, we'll have some idea of what the at least general um, focal points of a district improvement plan could be. And then I would also be in a position to sort of report back to the committee on some of my themes or findings that have occurred to me in the course of my meetings with, uh, with town officials and uh, uh, our internal partners. So that's kind of in, in broad sweeping terms, um, what has been keeping me busy and what will keep me busy in the, in the weeks and months ahead. And so I thought, you know, given it, that it was sort of my, my first formal uh, appearance before the committee, that it would be good to give you an idea of what my entry plan has been and, and uh, will continue to be. And I'm, I'm certainly open to direction and, and input from the committee. So. Thanks, Marty. Does anyone have any questions, comments, feedback? John. Uh, I think this is a very comprehensive plan. I just would suggest perhaps uh, contacting the Republican Town Committee, Democratic Town Committee, and the Council on Aging mm -hmm. just to touch base with them. And they are a constituency that all three of them are um, and certainly worthy of uh, Contact. Absolutely. Okay. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we'll add it to the list. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks, John. Russ. I, I just wanted to comment that I, I really liked the plan, too. I thought it was uh, well written and thought out. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jeff? Yes, Michelle. <coughs> I wanted to also compliment Marty. That was a 
fantastic report. It was a joy to read. I feel like you've thought about this a lot, and you have an excellent plan of how to dive in and, and <coughs> make sure we're on to a good start. So thank you very much for putting that together. Um, I think the only thing that I thought of on top of the parents that you listed was maybe trying to contact some of the parents of the children that have left the district in the last year or two. Um, some of them were, were moved, you know, for location or whatever, but I think some of them might have chosen to go to a private school and, and might be valuable to find out why um, and what we could do to improve and, and not move students who left the district for reasons that we could, you know, control. Yeah, that, that makes sense uh, in, in seeing if there are any existing exit surveys and if there are opportunities to, to contact the parents you described. I, I, I would love to take advantage of that. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Great so idea. Thank you. That was great. Great idea, Michelle. Stephanie, anything? No, I thought it was great. Um, and I look forward to talking more about that district improvement plan because I have some... Um, some thoughts and input on the on the last one and things that I'm I'm hoping will change for the upcoming one. Thank you. Yeah, I I agree with what everybody has said. I think it's an excellent document. I appreciate all the work, um, Marty, that went into it, and Diane as well. It's, it it seems really comprehensive to me. Very thoughtful. I think it's really helpful to the school committee in grounding in terms of where we're starting, what we're doing, and um, uh, connecting with all the stakeholders for, for all of us, you know. Um, and I also, my one, the one thing that struck me when I was reading it over uh, was the students. And I wondered if there might be a, a more comprehensive, possibly more, I don't want to be, <laughs> to your long list of spend two years meeting with people um, <laughs> but it, you know if there is a way to get some time with with students really fr from the you know the spectrum um, I think that children give such wonderful uncensored feedback um, and they're the ones who are in there uh, experiencing what we're trying to create every day so um, it, to me, that just really stood out as an area that we could uh, hopefully focus on a little bit. Yeah, I, I think um, I'll have to be in contact with the principal to find out what, what venues and opportunities right. there would be for that, in addition to the travels that I'll have as I make my way through the district, just wandering into classrooms and, you know, sitting down beside a kid and asking them what they're working on. And you're right, they say, they say uh, <coughs> uncensored and, and important things to us. So, yeah. yeah. In, in, yeah. Whether you know, again, in consultation with the principals, of yeah. course, you know whether yeah. it's a, a classroom that you're visiting and that you ask them, you know, their thoughts about school and what they like about school or what they don't like about school, and you're yeah. gonna, I think you'd get some really valuable feedback. It would be wonderful. Um, and I think that's all. It's excellent. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, and again, I appreciate uh, what the, the warm reception I've received and appreciate the opportunity that the committee has given me and look forward to moving forward with this. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we can move on to uh, Tom, I believe. It's the f okay, so you're going to provide a report, but it's not the Finance Subcommittee report. Correct. Finance sub has not met since our last meeting, but I did want to include in your packet an updated FY16 year-to-date budget report. Uh, the last time the committee received the report was back on June 29th, and yeah. included in there were still some assumptions as the final payroll hasn't hadn't been processed, nor had the final accounts payable warrants. So I think this kind of gives us a, a better sense of where we're going to end FY16 now that uh, just about everything has been recorded for expenditures. Uh, we still have some encumbrances um, that will either carry forward into FY17 or get um, released. So we're still processing that as we still have some, some final transfers that will have to take place. But I would say the report is about as comprehensive as we're going to get in terms of an ending balance. Um, so it definitely has changed a bit since the June 29th report. Um, we estimated a balance of just under 30000 back in 
the end of June, and now we're looking at about 85,000. Uh, it's due to a couple couple issues. Again, encumbrances that we had in the June 29th report, we had just under 600,000 encumbered. Now we have uh, just under 80,000, so some of those were released, which means they went into the available balance column. Uh, we also had estimated, especially in the substitute lines, uh, both long-term and day-to-day -day subs. Um, so now that those final expenses have been posted, along with utilities, um, those no, no longer are just uh, projections, those are actual figures for the year. So um, so we're looking at about $85,000 <coughs> um, in the general fund, which would be remaining for FY16, assuming the committee takes uh, no action to use uh, use those available that available balance at this time. But I'm happy to answer any line item questions you might have or um, anything regarding the report. Any, does anyone have any questions? If I could just add, we'll probably receive one more. Um, the committee will authorize uh, if whatever the bottom line number ends up being after we do all our transfers and everything, uh, any turn back if there is any amount left over. But the school committee uh, historically would authorize that uh, before we close the fiscal year. Okay. So probably sometime uh, mid to late August. Okay. We'll have that final report. And again, that will run through finance sub <coughs> at that time and then come to school committee. Okay. Nobody. I have a question. Jo well, John, it's yes. sort of like anticipating. Yeah. We're going to try and do something on the science textbooks. What's that going to leave? To, uh, have you got a figure for that? Um, <coughs> yeah, based on at least the report, John, and the, not the, the amount for... Uh, the requested materials, it would leave us under a thousand dollars. Actually, it would leave us under five hundred. Yeah. Okay. Right, and and along the same lines as the, you know, we're about to talk about the the science curriculum, the elementary science curriculum. Um, I know, you know, Tom, you and I have talked a little bit about, <coughs> and, and the committee ha have had some different people have talked about how we can structure a budget in a way that plans for uh, textbooks and materials um, so, you know so, that we're plugging in some sort of projections at the beginning it's part of our process from the beginning so that everybody understands it's part of our budgeting the town understands it's part of our budgeting because um, you know as, as we mentioned in the last meeting I know everybody on the school committee feels the same way that um, sort of trying to throw this together at the last minute in the summer and trying to scrape together money for something that's so critical to what teachers are trying to do in their schools um, is, <laughs> is not ideal so I, I know that the committee um, is really committed to trying to find a way to incorporate it um, hopefully for this budget cycle and and working on incorporating that any you know those projections so um, we'll keep those conversations going okay so why don't we unless anyone ha has any other comments why don't we move on to um, to the use of the year-end funds which the proposal before us is purchasing the science curriculum kits for the elementary schools so uh, if I could uh, just offer some some lead-in comments, uh, I want to recognize and acknowledge the the work that has been done on this for several months. The the science committee uh, has been studying this in earnest uh, for some time, and obviously had come to the committee back in May with. Um, you know, a uh, proposal to adopt the curriculum, and I think that was successfully adopted at that time. And so now it's just a matter of identifying the resources that we can provide to teachers and students to um, to make it happen. And so I appreciate the uh, patience of the principals and the district administrative team and, and some of the science teachers that I met with to get me up to speed on this so that we could bring to you a recommendation that we all believe in 
there were a number of considerations that we wanted to pin down. Obviously, the, 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 the current costs, the future costs, uh, we wanted to pin down the, an implementation schedule, uh, some plans for professional development to make sure that teachers are properly supported, and then have some expectations for our teachers that, that were reasonable in terms of uh, how much of this new curriculum uh, they could address and, and how they would access the materials. So I'm really pleased and with the recommendation we put together. Uh, Sue has put together a brief PowerPoint uh, that explains the recommendation and the rationale. So. Okay. So really we all put the PowerPoint together, but okay. thanks. <laughs> and I'm sorry about the color. I guess that's just a summer theme. We tried to fix it, but no go, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. So we, I think all of us know we're talking about the FOSS science kits that were available for us to look at earlier in the school year. I know maybe new folks haven't really had a chance to get into them and dig into them, but each science kit contains three modules, a life science module, an earth science module, and a physical science module. I have to say that slide, they had to dumb it down for me because I was trying to understand what's, <laughs> right, what's a kit, what's in the kit, what's not in the kit. Kit versus so, module versus unit. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, I, so I, it, it took... I think uh, we're on the same page They now. were very patient with me in trying <laughs> to help me understand the terminology. So each FOSS kit supplies the three modules and the materials for each module. Um, the toolkit or the supplies for each inquiry, which is another word for experiment. Uh, living materials, and um, they don't come when the kits, but we send away, we have cards that we send away, they're prepaid, and then the live creatures come back, and they're just bugs and worms and things like that. Um, online content for every kit and module, um, 32 resources, uh, resource books per module, and those are kind of thin resource books for the students to use along with the kit and the investigations. And the online digital resources uh, provide teacher support, interactive simulations, virtual investigations, and tutorials for parents and teachers to access. So here's where it gets a little tricky. Um, we've met a couple times on how to best um, <coughs> disperse the kits throughout the schools. So uh, this is the final plan, our final recommendation. In grades K through four, um, we're gonna get each, we hope to get each grade level three kits. Um, and we'll organize the kits into like modules, earth, physical, and science. So they're gonna come here, get shipped here, we'll pull them apart here and separate them into each to modules. We'll distribute the like modules to the elementary schools. So this is just for an example, we haven't decided for sure, but for example, earth science would first go to Blueberry, physical to center, and life science to Wolf Swamp. And then the modules will rotate through the schools um, for each trimester. And there's a kind of an example of a chart that, that it might look like. Any questions on that? Because that was a concept that we took a long time to, some of us took a long time to do that. <laughs> that was a slow learner. <laughs> uh, grade five, we're hoping to get six kits, which will allow the fifth grade access to life, earth, and physical science modules as needed to address the rigor and complexity of the new frameworks. Um, it aligns curriculum and instruction with the MCAS testing schedule for the spring and addresses the new science standards in all areas to prepare for entry into middle school. So we're asking for a total of 22 kits, 16 kits for grades K through four, six kits for grade five, and uh, this will allow us for collaboration within schools, for collaboration across the district, it promotes collaboration among grade level teams members in the same unit, and it incorporates cross-curricular instruction. And these were some questions that um, some of you came up with and people have been asking right along. And I think the first one's a pretty important one and your principals are here to answer anything along these lines, but we wanna know how teachers will feel about getting a new science program. And we had a, we had a pretty good committee that had a lot of representation. Um, and they were extremely excited, but they took kind of informal surveys back at their schools. So um, we're expecting that they'll be relieved over having something to use instead of having to go dig for what they need for each unit. Um, there's really no curriculum in place at present to address the new standards. So if we don't purchase the program, teachers will need to realign with materials they are currently using. And then we, uh, 
we're concerned about how the summer curriculum work will assist in implementation of the new program and we have folks lined up to start that work as soon as we're able to purchase the kits so um, their work will be preparing for an introduction of materials um, background on newly adopted standards and logistics of the kits and their implementation uh, they'll investigate opportunities for integration of science with ELA math and social studies they'll develop the grade 5 sequence even though the modules really come with scope and sequence and pacing guides and then they'll determine <laughs> the logistics for moving the kits grades grade K through 4 Russ. Um, how about the union? Have we had any conversation with the union about, I know the teachers in the union, kind of what their thoughts are about implementing I'm trying science to think who was on the committee that would have been. There was, uh, I, I seem no. to recall that uh, there was one union official that someone had kind of on a quick run through with. I mean, they must be aware that we're talking about it. We haven't heard any objection yeah. from No, you know. the, Kathy's been here for all the presentations, yeah. so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the bigger concern might be if we have nothing, you know, yeah. that, it, that yeah. we're asking them to address new standards without properly equipping them with, with uh, materials. And so I think this will, it's always a challenge for teachers to, you know, adopt and adapt to new materials and new curriculum, but I think they recognize the need, and um, I think without it, we would be putting them in a difficult spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what are the recurring costs? Well, based on our model, one module supplies materials for one year. Um, with the updated proposal, restocking the kits will cost approximately 4,400 yearly. It's a different rate for different grade levels. Some have no recurring costs. Some have more than less. So it's kind of it's tough to get an exact answer, but. That was our best estimate. Um, with the updated proposal, the recurring cost for living materials will be about uh, $1,750. Um, and we also, in FY18, will need another fourth grade kit if we continue with the big fourth grade class, and an additional fifth in FY18. 19. We'll change that after. Um, if the kits are shared among the buildings, who will be responsible for packing modules at the end of each trimester? Um, the teachers are going to have to be responsible for that, packing up the modules. Um, the, the folks that we talked to about it thought that it wasn't a big deal, that the kits are they're all bagged and labeled, and you know when they finish their investigations, they go right back in, so most of the stuff is already packed. Um, and then how will the kits get moved between buildings? Um, moves will be scheduled with the DPW. We're hoping for their help on that one. How will science be rolled out next year? Uh, in elementary school, we have trimesters. So the first two trimesters, K through four teachers will be expected to complete a minimum of one investigation from each model module. And um, it, that's really not too taxing. Uh, they're, they're easy, everything is right at their fingertips. I think that we're um, hoping and probably assuming that once they dig into them, they'll, they'll do lots more than that. Um, in grades K through four, teachers will be expected to fully implement their assigned module during the third trimester. So the third trimester of school, they'll be digging into these kits and using them primarily for science. Uh, we'll have four days of PD from FOSS. So that will be through lesson study during the school day. We'll have to get substitutes. And then we're hoping to get them for one of our uh, professional development days as well that we have. We don't have many. Um, at the beginning of the year, teachers will receive an overview from the science committee. And I'll have to say the science committee has stepped up to the plate really to um, really get really informed and be able to do an introduction so that folks can start using the kits without some PD from the boss. Um, the staff will have access to ongoing online professional development and members of the science committee have agreed to provide support to their colleagues in the building throughout the year. Hopefully they continue that throughout the year. So here's our revised cost proposal with the additional kits. Um, well, we're hoping for 22 complete kits, and um, the cost is 72, 334. The teacher materials remained about the same, 4130. Um, live materials are $30 this time around. Um, shipping and handling is 6,000, give or take. Although we had some folks offer to drive to Nashville, New Hampshire to pick them up, <laughs> they'll let us. Um, for a total of 84, 709, 40. 
Can I ask why shipping and handling is so high? <laughs> yeah, that's why we were going to drive up there and get them ourselves. We said we do it for about half that. So each, um, it's, each kid is, yeah, if, they're if you can imagine, like this table, you know, so there's the life science module, the earth science, and the physical science, so that each kit is probably about the size of this table. And that's why we don't, you know, we thought that even from a, a storage and capacity issue, we, you know, getting each teacher a full kit, it would almost overwhelm them, you know, with with supplies and materials, and, yeah. you know, in terms of space. So, so it, it's an eye-popping number, and I think we can continue to work on it. Um, you know, maybe we'll we'll see if they if we can uh, squeeze them on that. But that's the most it would be at this point. It's a lot. Uh, Russ. So the way we're going to roll this out is kind of gradually, it looks like. Mm -hmm. But with the trimester idea, the four PD days, essentially, we're going to try to do those in the beginning. We're going to try year. to front load them. Okay. Right. And they can't commit to any times for us until we commit to purchasing the okay. purchasing. So. And it looks like, the, from the student perspective, until the third trimester, it's really the, the way we're splitting it out, those first two are really they're going to try it out very gradually. So the third trimester is really the only one where the kids will be getting the full benefit potentially. <clears throat> so you kid. you might have teachers who are going to dive right in from day one. In fact, I'm assuming you will have teachers who will dive in from day yeah. one. Well, especially the ones yeah, that were the, on the committee. Yeah, they're raring to go, definitely. Doing it, yeah. Um, with this model, how imperative is it that we get the next two, I mean, we were always looking at this in kind of three stages. Mm -hmm. With the way you have this set up, uh, let's say worst case scenario, we don't have the money to do the second and third phase where we get more of the kits. So we'll continue to do what we're doing and sharing between the schools and just refilling the, the, the costs of the materials. Um, it, I, I think we'll see how the moving of them go this year. I'm anticipating some challenges with that, for sure. Yeah. Um, it would be better to have enough kits for everybody. Potentially two per grade level would, would solve that problem. But I think we need to see how this year goes, maybe halfway through the year, think about a proposal for next year and where we're at. So it's more logistics than the actual educational <coughs> component. This should work. Yeah, it, it's really it's more logistics, well. and you know the packing of the kit, and it, will the materials really be there when it gets to the other side? And the, the, so we have to get through okay. a year of that first to, before we can figure it out. Yeah. And it's a lot of kits to move too. Um, it'll be a whole probably day of DPW work, I would say. And I don't know if they have truck big enough to get all the modules, mm. but and if you but if you sustain this model, next year we would only need. Just one additional kit. One additional kit per grade level. All right. Per building. Uh, we hope for. Okay. And then, you know, it, it depends on how many kids, students in that grade level. And there well, are a few just, other just factors. Just one additional one kit. Additional one additional, additional kit. kit. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's a fairly modest amount. That's $3,300, something like that. Mm -hmm. So is that? Yeah. The, some kits are more than others. Yeah. Some of the per, kits cost more kit, than others. But $3,300 per kit. That's the average. So the okay. lower grades so are less like expensive than the higher grades. Twenty grand or something yeah. like that. Uh, no. Yeah, Wait, I think to be clear, no. if we sustain this model, in FY18, we only need to buy one more kit, one thirty-three hundred dollar kit, which would be for grade four oh. blueberry, because of the cohort. If we want okay. to expand the model where there's not as much moving around, right. that will be dependent upon I think the logistics and how much work it is, but to keep sharing on the way it's designed in this presentation, we, we need, need one, one, one kit, kit in FY18 and one more kit in FY19. Okay. The sharing model. Yes. yes. The sharing model of rotating the different modules from building to building at each trimester. Maybe the, and, and maybe one of the principals of Teresa Mendoza can speak to this more, but there's some value in the sharing practice so that, you know, at Blueberry, all of the kindergarten teachers, for example, are, would be working collaboratively on the, for example, earth science modules. Mm -hmm. And so they would all, you know, they're all in the same sort of boat together. They're all working collaboratively. They're all learning the materials at the mm -hmm. same time. So the sharing model, there's some logistical challenges with regard to, you know, movement of boxes and things, but there's some educational value there too. But feel free to jump in. I mean, if there's something that we're not saying or you want to add here. Yeah. 
the only prevention with the sharing model is that you have you will never have a similar so scope and sequence between all three schools. In a, in order for mm -hmm. anyone to, to hear you though, you would just have to come up to the mic. <laughs> Sorry. So the the one difference or change with the sharing module is that each of the schools is on an independent scope and sequence. So the idea would be that if you eventually add more kits, you have all three elementary schools keeping the same scope and sequence. They would all be able to do earth science at the same time, life science, and uh, physical science. As long as we share, you have one school teaching earth science while another's teaching life and another is teaching physical. Right. But by the end of the year, they would all have a They would all have experience. a chance through right. all three of them. They will and all have gone through the scope and sequence just in a different yes. order. Okay. Right. Different and order. that does not allow for cross, cross school, you know, coordination or collaboration. So that would. Right. Okay. Thank you. Russ. Is it fifth grade when we start MCAS science testing? Yes. So, so would this be completed for the fifth graders? trimester three, if we do it in a different sequence, they still all be completed before the test date, hopefully? That's why we have the additional kits at fifth grade, so okay. that there wouldn't be any discussion. They would all be able to do the units in the same order, because we felt that, you know, whoever got it third, they might be some disagreement on who gets that. Okay. Right. So fifth grade, tell me if I'm saying this correctly, every teacher that's responsible for teaching science would have access to the full kit. Full kit, yes. All three modules. Right at any time they needed it. Right? Correct. So. Okay. So they would have the same scope and sequence. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Stephanie. Just in terms of planning for the recurring costs, so we have 4,400 yearly for restocking plus 1,750, so we have 6,150 plus for the next two years about 3,000 for a kit. So then shipping and handling so say we're looking at like 10 ballpark okay. so we would have to plan right be in that line item for curriculum right I mean what, sorry. <laughs> so what I would what I would foresee is that if we can actually put curriculum into our budget that this would be competing potentially with other things and mm -hmm. we'd have to figure out how important is it that you know the moving and the logistics and everything mm -hmm. else and how did it work this year versus whatever else is on that list for curriculum mm -hmm. items if we can actually get to that point but. right we can <laughs> <laughs> so um I, I think it would first of all I want to thank everybody for their hard work on getting all this together um, all the work that the committee did identifying the curriculum and um, um, uh, examining and um, evaluating and all the information you provided us so that we can understand I know a lot of work goes into the communication piece as well um, I feel really good about this and I am really glad that we're able to do it most importantly fi financially um, my one hope, as other people have uh, discussed, is that somebody can come back and maybe um, we can have something in the calendar just to remind us all and give us an update on you know how it's going in the schools and how the logistics, what's working, what's not working, because as much as we can guess how it's going to work now it really all that matters is what actually will happen um, and I just want to make sure that we get all that information as we're you know moving through the year without forgetting about it so yeah. Sue yeah that would be great just to make sure that we get all that and I thought John's question about the shipping was an excellent one I always tend to be one to scrutinize sh shipping costs so if there's anything we can do just it was know. more it's always worth it's more. asking it's, it's been lowered already so yeah. i don't know what, <laughs> what else they'll do for us but no, we can yeah. try i'm actually trying to squeeze some more pd out of them on top of that so yeah okay well thank you and thank you mm. thank you again jess can i just add to that y yes i i i also agree with what everybody has said i think this was such a phenomenal showing of group effort everybody did such 
amazing work trying to, to bring this to us right now in a real in a way that we can make it happen. So I want to thank everybody so much for um, everything that they did to get us to stay. Whether or not we were going to be able to get this, but I really, um, with all of the efforts, that this is now a reality. So thank you. But I also wanted to add, just in my son being in the pilot class for this curriculum, he just a week ago was collecting junk and found two things that he could use to make a light, you know, to light a light bulb. And that was just from trying out one of these kits in the classroom. So it's so real life and, and over the summer to watch my son take what he learned in the classroom one day and, and do that, I was, I was just so happy. So thank you so much. I don't know, can we make a motion to yeah. um, adopt the curriculum at this point? Yes. <laughs> I would love to make a motion. Do you have it in front of you? I do not. Okay. I have it. Well, there's a non, there's a dollar amount though that's not filled <coughs> well, in. Oh, okay, someone else. It's on the bottom of the okay. other. Yeah, we can. I'm, well, here I'll make it. Thanks, John. I move that the school committee authorize the use of eighty four thousand seven hundred nine dollars <coughs> and forty cents. Is that correct? Yeah. From the fiscal year uh, twenty sixteen budget for the purchase of the adopted elementary science curriculum materials as presented. We have a second. Second. Michelle. Second. Okay, and we need to do a roll call vote since we have Michelle's remote participation. Any other comments, Russ? Yeah, I just wanted to comment on the give back to the town because I think if that comes up, the way I understand this and it, it looks like this was something that was kind of considered throughout the year. Mm -hmm. This was the intended way we were going to fund it and now we're doing so. so it's not like this was bonus money or something that we were, I guess this is the way we've done it in the past. We're trying to get away from that, but uh, for right now, it's not like this is found money. The <laughs> intent was from the beginning to try and fund it this way. Is that correct? Yeah, we actually tried to save money in at least the curriculum area to put towards this, so okay. we were pretty mindful of that throughout the year. Yeah, good point, and, and so much effort was put into finding a number that was somewhat affordable and manageable for us, so because there was a much higher cost association and I know that there were so many iterations of what can we make work and what can we sacrifice to make this work. So there's a lot of, a lot of sacrifices that are behind the scenes here um, with this number. Um, and I appreciate you bringing that up, Russ. Thank you. Okay, uh, roll call vote. John? John Fitzgerald, aye. Russell Dupere, aye. Michelle? Oh, Michelle Gonski, aye. Yeah, she does. Uh, Jessica Hutchins, aye. Stephanie, Jasmine, I. <laughs> okay. So, I, on behalf of uh, okay. uh, the administrative team, the principals, <laughs> the teachers involved in the science committee, all the all the uh, elementary science Thanks. teachers, thank you, thank you very much. For this. Thank you. And and I just want to assure uh, the committee and perhaps any teachers that might be watching that we want to implement this in ways that are are, are modest and thoughtful and and. Uh, We'd rather do it, um, you know, thoughtfully and methodically than, than quickly and rushed. And so, we'll continue to, you know, gather feedback from the science committee and from all the elementary teachers. And we're looking forward to the professional development opportunities that Sue is lining up with FOSS. So, uh, and and we will definitely report back to you at a time that makes sense. So, thank you, thank you. Thanks. I I, I asked Marty just to comment on that briefly because I know there can be a lot of rollouts that happen for teachers last minute, and um, you know I just want to make sure that the teachers aren't every, the school committee as a whole wanted to make sure that the teachers weren't feeling that way. And I just wanted to also say that I think it is an amazing job that was done as far as getting the class done. I mean, this is a curriculum for K through five. We usually talk about a curriculum for like math or like four, you know, grade four or something. Right. I mean, this is a curriculum for K through five. So I really do think that it was uh, an amazing job was done to, to get that cost down. So. Can we get the, the, who controls the monitor? Can that get shut down? Turned is off. It turned yeah. off. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so next on our agenda is the Energy Task Force. And, okay, so Liz Bone it has brought forward 
potential nomination for the energy task force um, that we need to vote on, we need to approve as a committee. Diane, I'm not seeing the name on here. Am I missing it? Thank you, Dad. Okay, so it's Mr. David Miller. Um, I know the Energy Task Force has been meeting and doing a lot of work, and Liz and the committee are looking forward to working with David Miller. So hopefully with our approval, that will go ahead, move ahead. John, yes? I move uh, that the school committee appoint Mr. David Miller to the Energy Task Force. Do we have a second? Second. Second. <laughs> okay, roll call. John Fitzgerald, aye. Russell Dupre, aye. Michelle Brodsky, aye. Jess Hutchins, aye. Stephanie Jasmine, aye. Okay, so excellent. David Miller is now a member of the Energy Task Force, and thank you again to Liz for bringing this forward and for putting the information together. Or maybe Diane put all the information together. Did Liz did. Thank you, Liz, for doing that. Okay. okay. Now we have approval of warrants. Okay. I move the school committee approve the warrant batch number 2200 of the school lunch fund dated 29 July 2016 in the amount of $51,187.41. Second. Second. I was going to let Michelle go. <laughs> <laughs> We've been competing for seconds. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, John Fitzgerald, aye. Russell Dupre, aye. Michelle? Well, that's why you're not competing. Oh, she's she's not there. We lost it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We, I don't think we need to do it. It's okay. We can, yeah. we can go ahead. Well, I only need four. Yeah. If you want to vote, I'll call her back. And okay, on. Jess Hutchins, aye. Stephanie <coughs> Jasmine, aye. <coughs> Thanks, Russ. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Hi. Michelle, do you want to put in your roll call vote? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next batch? Yes. Okay, I move school committee approve the warrant batch number 3253 of the general fund for fiscal year 2017, uh, dated 29 July 2016, in the amount of $114,079.96. Second. Roll call. Okay. John Fitzgerald, aye. Russell Dupre, aye. Michelle Grassley, aye. Jess Hutchins, aye. Stephanie Jasmine, aye. And that's it for warrants. Okay. Do we, anything else before the <coughs> motion to adjourn? Um, minutes? You to yes. Work? Thanks, John. Minutes. Sorry about that. Um, does somebody want, can somebody volunteer to go through the motions for the minutes? John, do you want to? I'll do it if you want. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I move the school committee approve the minutes to the June 13, 2016 school committee meeting as presented. Second. Roll call. John Fitzgerald, aye. Russell Dupere, aye. Michelle Bradsky, aye. Jess Hutchins, aye. Stephanie Jasmine, aye. Okay. I move the school committee approve the minutes to the June 15, 2016 school committee meeting as presented. Second. Roll call. John Fitzgerald, aye. Russell Dupre, aye. Michelle Grassi, aye. Jess Hutchins, aye. Stephanie Jasmine, aye. I move the school committee approve the minutes to the June 29th, 2016 school committee meeting as presented. Second. Roll call. John Fitzgerald, aye. Russell Dupre, aye. Michelle Grassi, aye. Jess Hutchins, aye. Stephanie Jasmine, aye. Okay. I move the school committee approve the minutes to the July 11th, 2016 school committee meeting as presented. Second. Roll call. John Fitzgerald, aye. Russell Dupre, aye. Is this the one I'm sorry to ask? Is this the one that I was not at where you can find warrants? Yeah, that, Diane said that's yeah. correct. Okay, so I will abstain. abstain. Yep. Uh, Jess Hutchins, aye. Stephanie Jasmine, aye. Okay. Move we adjourn. Thank you, John. 
Second. Uh, those. I don't know if she had some. No, roll call. John Fitzgerald <laughs> eye. Russell Duke Gray eye. Jeff Hutchins eye. Stephanie Jasmine eye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.